Hello Internet and welcome back to my Sky Island playthrough. In the last episode we started our next expedition and unfortunately kind of landed where we previously saw all of those fungal creatures. We decided to head away from them because of course we would, why would we go anywhere near those things? And we ended up finding a speedway, it really was the only thing around us and we went basically just to find a vehicle. Unfortunately that didn't really work out, there was a portal there in addition to some feral mechanics things like that so we did a little bit of fighting but mostly we just did some looting and we grabbed a lot of welding rods in particular so our inventory is actually pretty full up with all of these different welding rods and welding tanks things like that which are great but we came down here specifically looking for animal carcasses so I'm a little disappointed that once again I got sort of distracted from my overall goal however with that I think we're back hello everyone welcome back to the series I was really struggling with what we should be doing in this episode couldn't really pin down what I should prioritize. We're basically in the middle of nowhere with no points of interest. The only other thing I was really looking for from this expedition, we were trying to find a light bulb, which would probably require us to loot like a house and take apart a lamp or something like that so that we can get lights back at our own base. And this nearby town, Frenchville, it's a little too far away for us to be going to. Uh, we do have like seven ticks left on the expedition timer. So if we really wanted to, we could go try and tackle the evolved enemies that we you know for our mission up here but i don't know that we're going to do that i think instead we're going to climb some trees i forgot you can climb trees to get a little extra z level vision so i think we'll head over here climb a tree and hopefully we will see the edge of a town or something that catches our interest we are currently surrounded by animals but they're all very fast and oh my mini map is messed up for some reason but if we have a look down here or even i'll open this menu we have a lot of rabbits which are less fast than the birds like it's possible we could catch a rabbit if we really tried but they are still extraordinarily fast uh so they'll probably be able to get away from us and they're all fleeing so they're not going to stick around and let us get close so i think we're just going to head west uh, i'm a little disappointed the last episode we didn't really have a lot of direction didn't really know what to do with ourselves to make sure safe mode is on remember we saw a migo previously so we kind of want to be careful here and then to getting into the forest we'll be able to grab sticks and you know stuff like that that we can take with us uh, we might even strip you know we might strip down a few pine boughs or something like that i don't uh I don't remember really what you use those for, but I know you can make pine needle tea still, I'm pretty sure, so. All right, let's head into the forest. Let's climb a tree here. Climb, how do we do this? Climb, oh, that's right. So let me see if I remember this right. So basically roofs in this game don't exist until they exist. So coming over here, all of these trees, uh, we were previously over here, all the trees in the area that we're at currently were not loaded by the game. So they don't have anything that we can climb on them. So if we just uh, like examine the tree, we can't do anything. If we hit the climb button, we can't do anything. So this doesn't actually take effect until you reload the game. So I think if I save and reload the game, this should now have a roof. Also ignore that playtime that popped up. It says we're at like 20 hours, but I definitely have left this running in the background and forgot I had it, uh, had the game running. So back in the game, if we try to examine a tree, we still can't do it. But if we hit the climb button, we can now climb because uh, for some reason the game doesn't generate roofs until you reload that save. So now all of these have roofs, which means we got uh, up a Z level, which means we get the, the benefit of having a higher Z level vision. So if we climb back down, hopefully we don't fall. Somewhat risky to climb down like this. Yeah, this sort of thing bothers me. I climbed up, fall down. No, you know, let's not fall down. So hopefully we don't fall. I should have drop my backpack before we climbed because uh, I think that sort of encumbrance does matter. Okay, so that actually was a, a huge vision improvement. I did not expect it to be that big. Man, one Z level gives you that much vision radius? That's pretty crazy, but uh, okay. So that's a viable option moving forward. I should be doing that basically all the time, climbing trees and stuff to get better vision. Unfortunately, really revealed nothing nearby. We have a mine. Now there was something I wanted to go to the mine for before and then forgot about it. Someone specifically even left me a comment and was like, hey, that thing you were looking for, you can find it at a mine. Is it shovels? Wait a minute, we are looking for a sh hold on. Yeah. 
yes, that is what it is. So when I looked up shovels in a previous episode, because that's what we need for our next expedition, one of the highest percent chance of dropping that is from a zombie miner, which appears to have a one third chance of dropping a shovel. And I'm pretty sure the HHG usually loot displays are kind of messed up because of the way item groups work. And, um, you know, I don't want to have to explain it, but it's basically like a group that's nested in another group that's nested in another group. And it gets a little complicated with these being this way so 33 percent chance doesn't actually mean like you know a third of them will have shovels on them but it's a very high number and it's at the top of the list which means it's one of the most likely places to find it so i think our entire plan just changed and we're gonna head over there and fight some zombie miners and try to find ourselves a shovel because if we could come out of this with a shovel i believe we have everything required to upgrade to the next tier of our base which would give us that bigger room remember is like the the main thing we were after so we need a shovel we have uh we can get sheet metal that's not a big deal although that's the large sheets they are a little bit you know more problematic to move than the small sheet metals two steel frames we know we can get that from the material tokens if we really wanted to do it that way and then uh, strings are no issue we can pick up some strings pretty much wherever all right so that's that's great uh let's go try to find and we do have that drilling quality as well that's why we made that one drill back when we were doing our base video so yeah, I think our priorities just shifted. We're going to head up towards that mine. I was going to auto travel, but you know what? I actually think that's a bad idea. Or I'm sorry, auto travel is fine, but we don't want to do the auto walking just in case uh, we would get into a problematic place. But we'll use auto travel to quickly uh, navigate through this forest here. If we see any forest animals, that too, we're like, again, the forest is a place where we could potentially get a, an animal carcass pretty easily because if we come around a tree and it didn't know we were there, there it wouldn't have been able to flee even if it's much faster than us so we could potentially like shoot an animal but i think more likely we're not going to be able to do that because by the time we pull out our rifle that sort of thing so the ravens are ignoring us it's possible we could get close without them fleeing oh there's a building in the forest here a collapsed shed okay so these birds don't appear to be afraid of us so let's grab our ruger go ahead and drop the bat and now they're fleeing okay so let's see if we can oh our aim is so bad because they're so tiny i really thought this would be a little bit better than it is i even at precise aim we're only going to get like a one in eight chance of hitting them okay i don't know what to do about that i was going to say we could just try to melee them but there's no way we're going to hit them in melee uh unless you let me get really close this is not going to work yeah okay hello bird please don't run i just you know okay I wish you could like scatter bird seed or something and have them come over to it. So let's wield the baseball bat and we will store the Ruger in our inventory for now. All right, well, you know, I don't know. Seems like the animal carcass thing's not really working out. We have a German Shepherd. Again, with the animals, it's actually pretty easy to deal with uh, dogs and cats in terms of like hunting for meat. The problem is it's a big carcass, you know, imagine you know, trying to carry a German Shepherd over your shoulder the whole way back as you walk through the forest. Probably not going to happen. And usually where there's one dog, there's other dogs. So we're going to be a little careful. But I would like to look in this collapsed shed. I don't, you know, the dog's not hostile at the moment. So I thought maybe we could grab some long strings from these windows, but I don't actually know that they would have curtains. Let's turn off auto travel mode. And yeah, I don't want to pry the windows open anyway, because that takes time. Although I don't know how, didn't we do this in a previous episode? It turned out to like not take long at all. So if we go to deconstruct three minutes. Uh, I think I actually activate the hammer in this circumstance. Pry, so it's 1518, yet yeah, it only takes a few seconds. No curtains, yeah, I didn't really expect curtains. Oh, but we can take the planks. Yeah, why don't we do that? Because we have the lumberjack bag still, so we might as well take back some wood while we're out here. It only takes a few seconds. Oh, that's the wrong, yeah, no, don't use deconstruct because deconstruct takes three minutes as opposed to activating the hammer, which takes a few seconds. I don't understand these inconsistencies sometimes with the game, man, it doesn't make sense. So let's, no, don't use deconstruct, use the hammer. So how are you doing internet? What's going on with you? I, uh, I haven't been awake very long, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 came out today. 
I was very excited to play that game uh, because I'm kind of in the mood for some fantasy stuff. I've, I've been playing Skyrim a little bit uh, in my free time, and I thought, like, oh, Dragon's Dogma, you know, it's pretty beloved. You know, people always refer to that game as pretty janky, but, you know, overall, it was a, a fan favorite, I think. So I was pretty excited to pick that up today when it dropped. Uh, I very rarely pay full price for a game, and uh, usually I don't buy games on day one, but I was pretty excited to do that. And then I found out it has Denuvo, and I was like, you know, just on principle, I don't buy games that have Denuvo anti-cheat. Uh, like earlier, I think it was, no, I guess it was last year, the Calypso Protocol, or Callist, what's that game called? Callisto Protocol, which a lot of people referred to as like a spiritual successor to, you know, Dead Space, which is one of my favorite games of all time. So I was like, oh, I'm really excited to play this. I'm definitely going to check it out. And I found out it had Denuvo, and I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to buy that because I don't want to encourage encourage you, you know, that, that you, I don't want you to think it's okay to have like super restrictive anti-cheat stuff. Like I, I just don't want that in my life. Why is all this welding wire? Oh, it's wire. It's not the rods. So these are tiny. Okay. I mean, it's still like a lot of weight. Where is all that stuff? It must be in my jeans. I can't, uh, I can't take off my jeans and jacket. If I take, if I drop my jacket, how much does my torso encumbrance go down to five? It only goes down four points. My leg encumbrance is pretty bad, but that's because of the holster. That's not actually because of the gear I'm wearing. I don't want to drop my pants. I mean, I guess we are wearing the cataphract leggings, so it's not like a huge deal. Yeah, that didn't do much for us. Again, it's like four points. So, okay, well, we're just going to fight like this because I, I want like every little bit of reduction that I can get. Sorry, I'm being a little careful here. I would like to pull them one at a time. Remember, we I think the mine was like one of the very first locations we found in this playthrough, and we saw, I think, 14, something like that, minor zombies. So we really don't want to be... Oh, that's right, they have terrible vision. I forgot about that, because we looked them up. Someone's sprinting off into the distance. Oh, it's that Robin, okay. So yeah, they have very bad vision. So we actually have to get pretty close to get their attention. We are getting the horde music, although I doubt you can hear that after editing. Okay, yeah, so really bad vision. I thought they weren't quite that bad, but I'm just afraid to pull. There we go. I'm afraid to pull like four of them at a time. Um, oh, and I didn't really pick a place where we should be fighting them. Boulders 250, 250, small tree 200. Um, I guess we should fall back into the forest proper if we're gonna do this. My temperature gauge is going up. My feet are warm. Okay, well, probably not gonna do anything about that. That's pretty normal. People sweat, feet sweat, no big deal. Uh, let's move in here and we'll try to get you caught up on the 400 move cost terrain. Uh, and then this is uh, 100, so we'll just try to keep swinging at you. It's okay. So we hit uh, Batter the Miner, 29, 24, 30, and then 29 for a critical. I really wish our criticals did more damage, because if you look here, our first hit was 29, and it was not a critical. And then we get a critical, and it's also 29 damage, which is actually less than another regular attack. So that's, you know, I just wish there was some consistency with that. Let's have a look. Do you have a shovel? You do not. You have a mining helmet, a shield visor, and clothes. Thing, which is fine and we do need to check wallets because we're still looking for a platinum gas card i think we talked in the last episode about how cash cards are going to become a lot less valuable moving forward uh the gold discount i don't think we've seen a gold discount card either so i think maybe we should grab that in fact let's haul our stuff over there because last time no <laughs> not afraid of the zombie miner that's fine just please stop interrupting me last time we were here we ended up abandoning our backpack uh, like literally that was episode one and we ended up abandoning our backpack because we got kind of trapped in an area where we couldn't really go retrieve it. I think we had seen, was it Amigo? I think we saw like a nether creature that we didn't think we could handle. So let's wear the hiking backpack to grab that gold cash card or that gold card just in case we need that. I was afraid of uh, forgetting where it is. A mesh nape protector, huh? Nape protector attached to a hard hat. So... I've never seen a mesh one. I've seen those like rubber, like nape protector cover things, but I've never seen a, a mesh one. Why would it be mesh? 
Oh, is it like metal? Like mesh being metal? No, it's cotton mesh. What good would this possibly do? Protect against the sun while letting the cold wind... Okay, fair enough. You know what? Fair enough. That's my mistake. Okay, so let's drop our bag again. And yeah, we're just going to pull these guys ideally one at a time. And uh, we're going to have some trouble when it comes to the... Did you really not see me yet? We're going to have some trouble when it comes to the fence. What do you see? Oh, you look different. What the hell is this? Shady zombie? Really? I have not seen a shady zombie in this game in so long. When I first started playing, they were, um, basically you would find hordes of them in the street. Basically, they would just be like five of them hanging out in the darkness, and you wouldn't be able to see them, and they would, you know, come through windows and stuff to wreck you. Like, all the other zombies are blind at night, basically, but these can see very well in the dark, so they were, like, hordes of those guys would attack you. Anyway, let's, uh, just grab this miner here. Yeah, so that fence is going to be a little bit of an issue as we move forward, I think, but not not like a scary situation or anything. Let's move down here, and I really wish you had come from the other direction, but if we can get you on this one, you hear brush. Yeah, no, just step on the bush. You hear brush times four. Did you lose me? Are you? Oh, you're moving through other very slow bushes. Fair enough. I didn't even didn't even notice. Okay, glow sticks, lighter, multi-tool, shovel. That's a shovel, ladies and gentlemen. That's exactly what we were looking for. Also, you were mining in a leather corset. Gotta respect that, absolutely. All right, so the shovel is fantastic. That is the whole reason that we came over here. I'm sure there's other stuff we would want from miner zombies. What are these, what, are, what is this? What is this note? Hiking backpack, 11 items, hiking backpack. So those don't clear. Someone actually left me a comment about that saying that they don't clear. So how do we delete a note? Capital D, yes. Yeah, someone actually left me a comment when I marked the auto tracking for favorited items. They said, hey, if you ever like haul something, it'll leave a note in every single tile that you haul through. So we'll just delete those as we go. We can delete that one as well. Mostly this is just a precaution like, hey, if I drop my backpack a mile away and then and walk off, I'll know where it's at. I assume that's what these are as well. So we'll delete those notes as well. And then uh, some of this stuff does not matter, like the burned ground. I don't know if notes like lag the game after a while or what, but we're going to delete. We'll keep the sand one in case we need that. But like some of this stuff, you know, we can delete as we see like casings. We don't care. Toxic waste, probably we don't care. Drug deal, yeah, we skipped that one because that one was with the Migo, which is like a super something we don't want to deal with, so we're not going to worry about that. And then what's this O over here? It's another crater, okay. What about these over here? More burned ground. I wish it didn't mark burned ground. A collapsed shed, we were just in one of those. And uh, is this a slime pit over here? Slime pit sure is, okay. I think we'll keep clearing a little bit the the area here but essentially at this point we found our two-handed like wielded object basically so my first thought when i saw this evac shelter i was like well we can go up there and get another solar panel but at this point we're gonna have to carry the um we're gonna have to find a way to fit our baseball bat in our backpack and then carry the shovel in our hands because the shovel is not going to be stowable like anywhere in fact, if we look at the shovel, it'll tell us what it can be contained in, and I highly doubt it can be contained in pretty much anything. It can be stored in the golf bag, which of course we don't have. And this is a non-negotiable thing. We absolutely have to take the shovel with us. I think for now, we will pull out the shovel and we're gonna put that on our pile of stuff. Let's reset our filter. And we're gonna mark this as north. We'll put this up here and then we will haul that onto the pile of our stuff. That way we do not forget that when we leave. Uh, it, this is a little precarious because if something really scary happened, um, say a lot of these enemies broke out at once and we had to fight a bunch of them, we're not gonna have time to sit here and try to make space in our backpack to accommodate our baseball bat and switch to the shovel and then get out of here. So it is potentially a little dangerous that we might have to leave the shovel behind in a dangerous situation, but I'm actually pretty okay with that. My question is how do I get these uh, enemies out of here one at a time without pulling them all and without having them all break down the fence? We could lure them over here and then the ones that are up north we could lure them up here or as much as we could with this blocked chain link and then we would back off so they can't see us. We would move south and we would come back in try to get in and hopefully pull them one at a time and, and maybe pull one out here. I don't know. That's a little bit of a, a tricky thing to ask, I think. But let's, um, 
Let's head up here. Seven zombie miners, one shady zombie. Yeah, that shady's gonna be basically blind in the daylight. I think it has like a three vision radius. It's effectively, it's flipped, right? Most zombies can see like 40 tiles in, in the daylight and three tiles at night. Shady zombie, it's like flipped. It's like three during the day and, and 40 at night or something like that. So what I'm seeing is that this guy can already see me, which means their vision radius is probably like 12 or 14 tiles. And that means we can't move up to open the gate because there will be at least one more that sees us although i suppose that's actually mostly fine they're so they're all moving i think they hear one of them moving and have decided oh i can't open it oh it's locked it's a locked wire gate okay well huh well now i don't i don't really know what to do i suppose we could head up top and just deal with this one to start with and we'll just back off this way so if they want to bash through they can i just i don't really expect them to what's over here just the bird we're not worried about that so at this point they shouldn't see us and they should stay stacked up over here we can hop the fence to the north here and fight one of them i doubt there's more in the building that are going to come out and be a problem so let's hop this fence and there's really no terrain here that we can super use to our advantage by the time we would get down to this one, it would already be approaching us, I think. We can try. You grabbed me. Let's back off. How slow are you exactly? Yeah, just not slow enough to effectively kite like that. These are barred, so whatever's in here is not going to be able to come, come attack us. And this is not going to step on that plant, I think. This one is 200. It's a vent pipe. I did not know we had vent pipes. You did grab me. Let's try to break the grab. Yeah, you're gonna hurt me, I think. As long as it's not a deep bite wound, we're just gonna face tank, you know, pretty much everybody here, I think. Nate Protector again. Yeah, so that too, in between the time that we initially encountered that mine in like episode one and the current version that I'm playing right now, zombie miners actually had their loot refreshed. When we were here previously, it was pretty much just like tool belts and mining helmets and that was it. A lot of this other stuff that has been added to their loot is is just different now. They have more tools, they have more uh, clothing materials that can show up. So someone apparently in, in all of this decided, you know, hey, to, to improve the zombie miners a bit. So let's see if we can peek and see if we can maybe lure another one without bringing the entire horde down on us. It doesn't really look like it. I really thought there was one like right here, but I think it would hear me by now. Let's just be a little careful. Oh, nothing up here. Okay, well, this building, I believe, is just offices, if I remember right. The place we're after is, it's basically these shelves right here, and these shelves right here would have the highest value um, tool spawns. And if we could find, like, a, you know, a nice file set or something to take with us, that would be nice. We can probably even slip into the one to the south here without them spotting us. And worst case scenario, we could just flip on run, uh, or run mode, and shoot south and hop the fence and be fine. But it's a little dicey. See, I guess. Why don't we try to slip around this corner? We know there was one in here, and I thought actually we had seen many more, so I'm curious where the other ones got to. Can we open this door? We can. So this is a little bit more access without having to go south and potentially trigger the others. So let's fall back because if that one makes a bunch of noise, the others might lure that direction as well. Okay, you did follow me. Can't really make out the terrain here. Okay, so we're just gonna, maybe we can get you to step on this sharp bush. So let's try again with this one. And then if not, we're just gonna fight you. Okay. So that's not terrible. That's okay. Oh, my stomach is gurgling. I have not eaten today. Uh, blood sugar is definitely a little low. Yes, yeah, so another shovel, which we're not super worried about. Uh, really no loot here that we want. I was trying to keep an eye out on their loot in case we found, you know, something of value. But mostly at this point, we're just scoping things out because obviously we dropped our bag. We would have to come back, get uh, uh, our bag and come back to loot. Task is too simple to train your survival beyond three. I think we started the game with survival three because of our backpacker profession. So not a huge deal. We are getting uh, horde music occasionally, I think. Uh, so another one, let's just fall back there. I just can't tell what the terrain is. Everything looks pretty open here. I mean, this is a bush, I guess. So maybe we can get you on the bush. Nope. So let's try to slip by. No, you grabbed me. Try to break the grab. See if we can get you on this bush. No. See if we can get you on this bush. 
Yes, so we'll just fight you again. Okay, this is a whole time consuming, a little tedious thing. How's everybody doing? Yes, so I mentioned uh, Dragon's Dogma, and I'm probably not going to buy it because of the De Nouveau anti cheat. I just don't support anti cheat and like DRM and always online. I hate that crap. I, for a long time, did not have good internet, so like anything that required an internet connection was unplayable to me. And then you would get these games that are like single player games that have no reason to be always online except for like anti-piracy stuff and listen i'm not going to sit here and say like you know piracy doesn't take money out of developers you know hands because obviously it does but i also just don't think ruining your game for anyone with a bad internet connection is like a legit choice so that you can sell a few more copies like i just don't i don't really understand i think if you make a good game you will make money for the most part like like well what like game of thrones right was the most pirated television show ever in history and i'm pretty sure they made plenty of money because they just made a really good product that people loved and wanted to be a part of so i'm not saying like piracy is is good or anything like that i'm i you know, I buy games that I want to support or that I really enjoy or, you know, whatever. I try to buy my games, especially as a YouTube creator. I don't like, like, I wouldn't play a pirated game on, on YouTube. So anything you see me play, I pay for and, and all that kind of stuff. But there are also people who, like, don't have money because the world is, like, a horrible place that's not fair and life is pretty terrible for a lot of people. And if someone wants to pirate a game to relax or whatever, I'm not going to sit here and give them crap for it. And then when I was, uh, had bad internet, there were a ton of games I couldn't play because they had always online or they had features that for some reason like I remember I think it was like Assassin's Creed 3 it was not the piracy one it was the one before the pirate Assassin's Creed so I think a uh, number three the 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 American gameplay where you play a Native American you're in like colonial America there was a, a mini game in that where you would send your ships out to like um like run missions and they would bring back materials or whatever and even though I could play the entirety of Assassin's Creed 3 for some reason that mini game required an internet connection and I was like but I don't have internet so I just didn't get to play a segment of the game in this single player game that has nothing to do with anyone but me, I couldn't play it because I didn't have I didn't have an internet connection or and at that time I didn't want to pay for an Xbox Live connection when I had bad internet. So like what is the point of that being always online? It's a single player game. What do you what do you it wasn't even like the whole game, it was just that one segment of the game. Why would you make that online only? What a terrible choice. So stuff like that drives me crazy. So anytime, even though it doesn't affect me, I would have bought Dragon. Dragon's Dogma 2, it would have come out of my pocket. It's not like I, I wasn't going to pirate it. I was going to pay for it. But then I saw it was Denuvo and I was like, you know what? I'll come back in like three years when you get rid of Denuvo. Like, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to support you. I don't want to make you think this is an acceptable way to do things. So I was like, man, I'm just not going to do this. So they did break out. And what really surprises me is that the Shady can see me. I'm not sure why. I really thought their vision radius was like three during the day. So that really surprises me. They are are very base level enemies let's look them up i haven't seen a shady in a long time let's have a look at them okay uncanny shadow envelops this creature as if light itself were too repulsed to touch it all you can make out is its shambling human shaped outline 2d3 bash damage really terrible not going to be a huge problem bite humanoid of course they have a grab attack scratch attack that's that's standard on most zombies 80 hp not a problem looks like they're pretty slow at 70 speed yeah, it says their vision radius should be three in the daylight maybe it's because i was standing in shadow so it treated it as night vision I'm not sure how that works and then they upgrade into the night stalker which is a pretty uh, which one one of these has a throat cut ability which is pretty absurd for uh, how dangerous that actually is so yeah obviously not really a problem today if, if it spots us we'll just fight it like we fought everything else basically and 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 deal with that so okay so where's the most optimal place to fight you what's the penalty on this furniture 300 that's good enough so let's just hop behind here and we will try to you know kite it along so that it's stuck on the uh conveyor belt here <clears throat> or rollers or whatever this is supposed to be Put it down very easy. Electric Lantern, we already have one, but it's a pretty great item. I'm glad we found that one so early. Yeah, more stuff we just don't really care about. A lot of this is building materials, by the way. I know I was talking over my, my search of this area. This is a lot of building materials we don't actually really care about very much. Now, I kind of get the vibe that our 
you know, Sky Island is maybe going to require some of these materials in the future. But since I don't know those things yet, I, I can't like know what to prioritize. And they tend to be very large, like a canvas sack of sand over here. 500 sand is not a small sack, right? It's a, it's a pretty big thing to be taking with us. Down here is the tool storage. So that's really where we want to go. Looks like there's one in here, but they're all facing this direction. So let's give a few turns and see if they move. They didn't really... Um, let's, you're gonna spot me, I think, but let's move down. Yeah, you did see me. Let's pull back. Oh, you, you didn't, what, you did spot me, but you just moved in place. Okay, that's weird. Let's come up here. Let's have a fight. You grabbed me. Doesn't really matter at this point. Are we really still not melee one? We had that thing pop up previously about, about melee one and we weren't yet melee of one with 86 percent what did didn't we just see something in the last episode about how our melee wasn't one yet okay it doesn't matter bashing weapons nearly level two as well and we've got a zero in piercing weapons because we've only been using the dory for a little while we are in pain why don't we pop a few ass oh why don't i oh because i dropped my backpack of course you dumb okay let's pop down to this tool storage man i have no idea how long i've been recording should probably check that okay my obs says it's been 35 minutes but i said that in the last episode and then after editing it was only like 26 minutes long so let's uh let's keep looting a bit here i'm i'm really glad we came over here not only did we find the shovel that we were looking for but like the tool storage potentially could be really good so unfortunately no never mind uh looks like a toolbox might have some stuff in it on on multiple tiles and then we have the jumper cables which is uh something we do want to take so yeah let's look at the toolboxes while we're here so we do have like wrenches already but we might as well take more i you know that's one of the things i was supposed to bring with me down on this expedition because i think you need a wrench to take apart a solar panel but i forgot my wrench we have a multi-tool but i don't think that has the bolt turning stuff that we need um so we definitely should pick up some of this stuff the survival kits we would take like the glow sticks probably would be like the only thing uh and the duct tape of course is is something we really do want yeah so not not anything we need need but we will come back with our bag here and grab some of this stuff i kind of want to keep fighting i was gonna say we should keep fighting the minor zombies but the reality is they've had like trash loot it's all clothing and stuff uh, it's like it's not trash it's just not stuff that we need so i don't really need like you know another pair of safety glasses or another mining helmet or, or whatever so they're not super relevant i think uh can we unload the filter masks by the way filter mask we could take those uh filter cartridges with us would be something i guess are we wearing a filter mask i think we took it off because i didn't like the the mouth encumbrance we're still wearing this stupid scarf i thought we took this off like a million years ago okay yeah no filter mask so nothing on our mouth it's a dust mask dust mask yeah so that's not okay i mean that's fine so we're not going to go down into the mine i just uh i don't see a reason for that and i believe it requires uh, hacking a computer in this building that we you know we just don't have the skills to do that let's have a peek what's uh what's over here door is locked i wish i could see through metal bars and curtains so if these all have curtains we could strip them for long strings as well would be something we could do is this door also locked it is well i don't know what are in these buildings i suppose it could be more tool storage but you would think that that would you know i mean pretty exclusively be down here in like the shed and the conveyor belt area i know this one i i believe this one is offices but i'm not 100 percent. you could pry it open with the right tool how are we prying open metal bars okay what well, doesn't matter we don't have a, a tool with prying enough to pop open these doors obviously i'm not gonna lock pick that would be pretty crazy i mean i guess really that is it let's uh head back uh, and again we would like a pickaxe but like the reality is that we would only use a pickaxe down here on the like earth side we wouldn't use it on sky island for the most part so why would we even take this because we're not going to carry it on every expedition hoping that we you know we need it that particular run so i don't know what we would really want a pickaxe for they're good to have but it just doesn't make sense to take them but we will come back up here because we would like the 
you know, glow, like we can pick up some glow sticks and stuff to take back with us, I guess. Let's check a few flyers. Sick of fuel prices? Yes. Bus stop too far? There's no bus stops where I live because we live so rural. Get your driving fix from the sun. Solar powered electric vehicles by Edison. Silent, cheap, powerful. Yeah. It's one of the things we have in the game that doesn't make a ton of sense. Solar vehicles would be very, very fragile in general is my understanding. Advertisement for RivTech brand firearms. Now there's something I like in this game. Shows a picture of a trio of well-armed hunters. The three of each arm, the three are each armed with different futuristic looking weapons and are shooting at a hostile crowd of approaching wildlife. We mean a hostile crowd of approaching wildlife. What are they hunting? Caption reads, RivTech caseless firearms, superior stopping power. Yeah, these were very, very, um, these were like go-to weapons several years ago. They were very, very common in the old lab, uh, like uh, lab armories from the labs that have been removed from the game or largely removed from the game. And yeah, those caseless rifles and caseless, the, uh, the caseless auto shotgun was one of my favorites. So yeah, love RivTech. That's a fun part of our, our lore is those caseless stuff. Government issued airdropped alert, stay in your homes, universal curfew in effect. Police and military forces are authorized to use lethal force against rioters and looters. Yeah, well, I've been looting for, you know, three or four days. I haven't seen any police intervention. Although we did see some militia and I guess we did run over a cop zombie at some point. Yeah, so I don't know what we would take here. I guess just the filter mask cartridges and uh we would take like the uh, glow sticks and stuff yeah let's go get our bag i guess we'll hop the fence up here there's stuff moving around in that building but we're not going to do anything with that i just now noticed there's a vehicle here we definitely should have checked this uh because that could open up a lot of like loot possibilities for us or go kill that horde that we are tasked with killing faulty engine uh gas in the tank but no batteries so this is not going to be something we can drive it's a v8 sports sedan okay well we can check what's on the seat might be a little food rotten cucumber sandwiches that's not gonna do it for me and then uh what do we got here actually a little road kit that's pretty nice box cutter knife folding knife funnel pliers rubber hose fire extinguisher screwdriver set wrench set man a wrench set is pretty good and then uh those are just the boxes i guess for those items first aid kit always good to have super glue also very good let's go grab our bag i want up oh, let's not walk directly south into those creatures didn't realize you guys had moved off or I would have just hopped the fence to the south. Let's go back. We'll go around again. Better safe than fighting three enemies for no reason. Although I suppose today we're not going to get a whole lot done. So why are you moving this way now? Stop following me. Why are you following me? I suppose we're not going to get a lot done today with the later uh, hours of the expedition. It's already, uh, looks like it's about four o'clock in the game here. So we're probably not going to do tons of expeditions. And even if we did, we're not going to be fighting and stuff to the point that we're super weary. So it doesn't really matter if we have to fight a lot or not. Okay, let's do some inventory management. Actually, this is where I'll call the episode. Maybe off screen I can shuffle things around so we can carry that shovel and you won't have to watch me fumble with my inventory. However, I do have to really remember that I need to pick up that first aid kit because I might uh, I might forget that between episodes. Sorry if that happens. But for now, I think we're going to call the episode, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'm super glad we found that shovel. That's our next base upgrade basically taken care of. And yeah, we're going to do that probably as soon as possible, although we'll need to make a trip for sheet metal, I think. But we'll, we'll figure that out later. For now, everyone, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'm going to go buy a giant salad for dinner, and I'll see you next time.